Have you ever wondered how it is possible for a seven-time world champion to end up eliminated in Q1, three times in a row? Today we tell you what Ferrari doesn't want you to know, the secret data behind Hamilton's disaster in Qatar. When a driver like Lewis Hamilton with more than 300 Grands Prix, seven world titles and decades of experience in extreme conditions, is eliminated in the first round of qualifying, Formula One stops. But it is not only the fact of having finished in 18th position in the Qatar Grand Prix that generates shock. It is what it symbolizes. It is the reflection of a structural problem that goes far beyond a bad return. This was the third time in a row that Hamilton crashed in Q1 this season. And if the first time was alarming, the second raised doubts, this third elimination marks a worrying pattern. These are not driving errors or lack of adaptation to the new team. This is an inability of the car to respond to the basic demands imposed by a circuit like Luzel. The Qatar circuit demands surgical precision in the fast corners, especially in the third sector, which combines several linked high-speed corners. It is an area where the stability of the car, the management of aerodynamic flow and the instant response of the front axle are key to setting competitive times. That's where Hamilton lost the most time. Not because it was slow on the straight, nor because of braking problems in technical areas, but because the SF25 simply did not want to turn. Under his hands, the car became an unpredictable machine, with reactions that no driver, no matter how talented, could anticipate or control. The difference with his teammate Charles Leclerc was almost four tenths. An immense gap at this level, even more so considering that both share the same machine. However, Leclerc managed to squeeze a little more out of the car, barely enough to get into Q2. And that nuance is key to understanding what would come next. The car does have potential but only under extremely specific conditions, and that implies that it is not working equally for both drivers. Hamilton's elimination was not just a question of timing, but of confidence. The British driver could not trust the Ferrari's front axle at the critical moment of corner entry. This lack of predictability not only reduces speed, but forces you to drive with margin, with fear of error, and that in qualifying is a sentence. Because in Q1 it's not just about going fast, but about going to the absolute limit. And if your car betrays you when you need that stability most, there is no talent that can save it. Furthermore, this event in Qatar was the breaking point that exposed a silent divorce between what Hamilton needs and what Ferrari has built. Because this is not a simple misclassification. It's a symptom. It is a raised alarm that, if not attended to, could cost Ferrari an entire season and Hamilton, the possibility of fighting for his eighth world title. And the most disturbing thing is that this was only the beginning of an even darker chapter, which would reveal internal flaws that telemetry failed to anticipate, but that the instincts of a champion did manage to detect. When a Formula One driver claims that the car is not behaving as it should, many within the team look to the telemetry for evidence. But what happens when the sensors don't show anything abnormal, but the pilot insists that something is wrong? That was exactly what happened with Lewis Hamilton in Qatar. And what was discovered later is what makes this story a real bomb in the paddock. During the qualifying session, Hamilton not only reported balance or grip problems. He was more specific. He felt that the car suddenly lost downforce just when braking was combined with turning, which in technical jargon is known as trail braking, particularly in fast corners and under crosswind conditions. That is, extreme situations where the car's aerodynamics are subjected to the maximum. This type of phenomenon is extremely complex to capture by conventional telemetry systems. Most sensors are calibrated to measure longitudinal and lateral forces under stable parameters, but when dynamic variables such as wind gusts, cross loads and weight transfers during deep braking come into play, the margins of error are amplified. What Hamilton felt was a kind of sudden emptiness in the front of the car. An aerodynamic hole that left him defenseless right at the most critical moment of the lap. At first, Ferrari engineers dismissed his reports. The data indicated that everything was in order. Correct tire pressures, vertical load within the expected values, reasonable stability of the front axle. But it was Hamilton who insisted, who pushed for a deeper analysis of certain pressure points in specific areas of the chassis. And that's where what the default telemetry couldn't see began to be revealed. Thanks to a cross-referencing of data between advanced internal sensors, pressure analysis in side fairings and high-speed cameras integrated into the front suspension, a micro-oscillation in the downforce on the front axle was discovered. A phenomenon so specific that it escaped the range of conventional reading. The key was in the interaction between the front diffuser and certain aerodynamic components of the spoiler that, when under conditions of extreme lateral pressure, generated a localized loss of lift. This not only explained the car's erratic behavior in certain corners, 
but revealed a serious structural problem in the SF-25's design. The most disturbing thing about this story is that if it hadn't been for Hamilton's sensory experience, no one at Ferrari would have noticed. The British pilot, with his history of victories and years at the highest level, detected what the computers failed to notice. It is an example of the incalculable value that an elite driver brings beyond the wheel. It is a living diagnostic instrument, capable of perceiving deviations that no software can predict. This episode also exposes a worrying weakness at Ferrari, its over-reliance on its virtual models and its reluctance to fully trust track feedback. In an era where teams invest millions in simulations, wind tunnels and computer analysis, there is a risk of forgetting that, in the end, the truth is on the track. And that truth, in Qatar, was shouted by Hamilton. Although at first no one wanted to hear it. The fact that Lewis Hamilton was eliminated in Q1 while his teammate Charles Leclerc managed to advance to Q2 with some difficulty, raises one of the most disturbing questions that any Formula One team can face. How is it possible that the same car works so differently for two drivers who, in theory, are at the same competitive level? At first glance, the difference may seem simply one of individual performance. But that explanation would be superficial. What happened in Qatar exposes a much deeper problem. The SF-25's design and technical philosophy appear to have been developed around a very specific driving profile, one that systematically benefits Leclerc and penalizes Hamilton. Charles Leclerc is a driver who, by nature, trusts the rear of the car. He prefers a rear axle that pushes him aggressively, even if that means a slightly more unstable front axle. It has a handling that is better suited to a car that is nervous, that turns easily but requires quick reactions. This style allows you to tolerate an unbalanced car as long as you can dominate it with aggressive inputs and immediate reactions. Hamilton, on the other hand, builds his speed from stability. Your style requires a front axle that is precise, giving you confidence when braking late and maintaining a clean path through long corners. He is a driver who extracts performance at the edge of the limit, but only if he knows that the car will respond with consistency. The moment that feedback disappears, the risk margin increases, and your style is directly affected. And that was exactly what happened in Luzale. The car did not respond under his hands, but it did allow Leclerc to survive. This type of disconnect between car and driver, if not corrected soon, can escalate. Not only does it generate frustration on the track, it also erodes internal trust between engineers, designers and drivers. In the case of Hamilton, this fracture is beginning to be visible. And the most dangerous thing is that, if it is not repaired from the roots, Ferrari runs the risk of losing not only performance, but also technical leadership and internal cohesion at the most critical moment of the season. The Qatar Grand Prix not only exposed the technical weaknesses of the SF-25, but also a silent fracture brewing within Ferrari. A latent tension between the star driver and the team structure, which if not managed with surgical precision, could trigger a crisis that drags the entire team to the bottom of the table. At Maranello, technical decisions are made with a mix of tradition, data and hierarchy. Ferrari, as a team, has historically been conservative in its way of interpreting information. They rely on simulations, on wind tunnel correlation, on numerical models generated from their data centers. But that blind trust in digital has begun to clash with the raw and lived experience that Lewis Hamilton brings, a driver who does not need graphics to know when something is not working. When Hamilton warned about the aerodynamic failure he felt in Qatar, the engineers stuck to the data. The graphs showed no anomalies. The sensors did not report loss of charge. On any other team, that would be enough to dismiss the driver's complaint. But Hamilton insisted, asked for advanced comparisons, demanded to overlay data with auxiliary sensors. And only then, when variables that are not normally analyzed in real time were crossed, the failure that had gone unnoticed by the entire engineering structure was discovered. This situation exposed something much more serious than an aerodynamic problem. It exposed a cultural rift within Ferrari. Because in a team that aspires to dominate the world championship, there cannot be such a profound disconnect between what the driver perceives and what the team believes is happening. If the judgment of the most experienced driver on the grid is not prioritized when there is a conflict with the data, then something is wrong in the decision structure. Is Ferrari inadvertently sabotaging Lewis Hamilton by not adapting the SF25 to his needs? Or are we simply seeing the inevitable price of the transition between two radically different work philosophies? Let me know in the comments what you think about all this.